All right, is Nadia Davis. I am a customer engagement manager. I am based in Australia, so I'm, con I'm connecting with you today from Australia, and my contact details are up on the screen, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. So I'm split into sort of two sections. The first part, we will look at EBSCO Discovery Service and searching um, on that particular platform. We'll also go over and have a look at um, of the uh, databases that you subscribe to as well on EBSCO Host. Now, EBSCO Discovery Service will search across everything, um, but there are some sort of, I guess, unique features, the specific databases that I'd like to show you as well. Um, on that note, let's. Yes, we can. You can hear me. That's great. <laughs> Welcome to the session. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Just started, so <laughs> just come in at the right time. Um, all right. So these all are some. Right. Of the <laughs> These are some of the objectives from this session. It's my hope that by the end you'll be able to construct and apply basic and advanced searches in EBSCO Discovery Service. Use facets and filters to refine your search results. Add detailed records for items that you do find. Uh, access full text as well as um, catalogue resources like EBSCO and non-EBSCO resources. Uh, access the um, of knowledge repository resources, and I'll also touch on some of the, the features around the My EBSCO host folder, so how to save articles, how to use some of those tools and features, and I'll also touch on where you can find some help. All right. Okay, a bit about discovery. So what is EBSCO discovery? So it is a discovery layer that sits on top of all of the library's resources. So see when we begin our search that we'll be looking across information from databases, we'll find some ebook content, we'll find some information from the library's catalog, uh, we might find some magazines, newspapers, all different types of resources, but through the one single sort of search box. Um, so I kind of liken the uh, EDS or the EBSCO Discovery Service to Google. The difference is um, Google is the gateway to all things free and controlled where anybody can get anything and pop it up on a web page. Whereas with EBSCO Discovery, it's the gateway to all things that are authoritative and vetted by the library. So it's authoritative information. EDS also provides that single interface for all the library's collections, both electronic and also your print collections as well. A couple of things in the back end for EBSCO Discovery Service, and this is also applicable to EBSCO Host as well, and one of those things is relevance ranking. So to give you a bit of a, an idea about how this works, um, basically the system itself has some prioritized uh, fields, if you will, and we try not to show bias towards content from any provider, including our own. So one thing that you will notice when you start running your searches is how the results appear on the screen. The default is always a relevant sort, and then how to it gets this or calculates this relevance sort is it tries to match your keywords on controlled terms from subject headings and also from controlled vocabulary. It will try to match your keywords in, in the article titles, the authored keywords, keywords that are within abstracts, and find keywords in the full text. But you'll usually find on the first page of results your keywords will match across those controlled terms from subject headings. In addition, to, in addition to that, and this is again on the first page of results, it will um, show you the more current content first. So the higher, you know, the first results you'll find um, more recent content perhaps and more older content, depending on your searches of course. Um, the document types are also considered, so some document types are weighted a little bit heavier than others and therefore appear higher. Something like a book review is considered bundle, so it's right down the bottom, you know, 10 pages in, whereas a review article would appear higher. Um, and then the document length is also considered. So a quarter page article is considered valuable, then say a page research paper. So they just, uh, some of the, the things that work in tandem to produce a first page of results. 
Okay. There's also some other features on EDS and I will go in and show you this on the platform shortly. One of the features is something called hyperlinked database names. So even though we're running a search in EDS and then I'm going to take you over into the databases as well, um, from EDS you will find some links. So for example, we might find some resources from EBSCO host such as Cont from Business Source Corporate Plus. I have a link that will take us into that direct platform. And these are just some of the people that partner with us and provide um, these links available from EDS to take us into that native interface or that native database. So enough about that, we'll go over into a live demonstration. So um, I'm going to first of all show you where you can access ES from uh, the, the library site. So if you navigate to the home page, directly from here there is a nice big link right at the top of the page. If we click on it, it will take us into this site. So you can see it's loading up for me now. Now because I'm not authenticated, I'm not on site in your organisation and I don't have a sign in to your account, I'm actually coming in here as a guest. So you can see that I've got hello guest, um, I need to log in for full access. So this is anybody can kind of come in here, find EDS and begin searching. Um, but if I wanted to access full text for example, I would need to authenticate through that note I'm going to be heading over into an authenticated version here um, where I've already signed in. So this is the landing page for EDS. Um, as you can see, nice big search box here. I've also got some great links to take us into the Knowledge Repository resources um, and some other information here as well. Um, from the main page, I can start putting in my keywords and do a basic search. I can also open up my search options here. I can view so sort of search modes and extenders before I run my search and I can also apply some limiters here if I wanted to as well. So um, that's our basic search. For the most part you will likely just enter in your keywords and go from there. I will just mention here in the search mode option, the find all of my search terms, places an and fully operator between your terms. So it acts a little bit like Google. So if I put in um, is finance, it would, the system would actually be saying Islamic and finance, okay. So it is going to put that and operator between those words and pr uh, produce sort of a narrowed search. Um, there are also a couple of expanders. An expander will help to expand the search out and there's two that are applied here by default. One of them is apply equivalent subjects. This will look for other subjects that match what you're searching for. And one here is searching within the full text of articles. So by default, as I mentioned before with the relevance ranking, EBSCO's last field that it searches in is the full, the full text of the articles. So this just helps to expand the search, provide a few more results, and then you can help you can start to refine your results as well. Um, in the limiters here, you will have an option to limit to catalog only. So if you want something that's in the library or in the catalog, for example, I can limit straight down to that. I can also limit to full text online and I can also limit down to articles from peer-reviewed journals. So that is just some of the options there um, that I can sort of apply. Kind of a little bit further down as well, there is also a collection limiter. So I can results to these particular collections. If I enter in my keywords, I can just narrow that down a little bit there too. Um, so that's a basic search. Um, there is also an advanced search. I'll just show you this. Um, it's just a bit more advanced. So you've got three fields that you can search within. They are divided here by the Boolean operators and you can add an additional nine rows. So you can have 12 of these rows in total and get quite a complex search um, in discovery. I'm going to head back to my PowerPoint for a moment and just cover some tips and tricks for searching. As you can see, our EBSCO does support bull searching, transition, phrase searching, nested queries, field codes and wildcards. Um, so the booleans are mentioned, the AND operator is used to narrow a search and look for all words in your query, the OR is used to broaden a search and look for any words in your query and the NOT can be to omit terms. So if you, you run a search and you're getting some terms in there that aren't relevant, you can use that NOT operator, put that term and just omit them from your search results. Uh, the truncation or the word stemming device is the asterisk. So this is helpful if you're wanting to look variations on terms. So wherever you truncate or stem that word, the system will look for variations in the term. Uh, 
after wildcard can also be used. So this is a question mark. So this is useful for British to American spelling. It's also useful for um, plural, as you can see here. Wherever that question mark is, it will just replace that with uh, the, the single characters. And the multiple character wildcard functions in the same way. It's the hash or the pound tag, and you again can use this for a variation between British to American spelling as an example. Um, and in this case, it's going to replace that multiple character. Some of the searching tips and tricks that you can play around with when you are searching on EDS. head over and do some quick searches just to show you um, the functionality of EDS. So the first search we're going to do is a very quick keyword search on Islamic finance. So general keyword search, you'll notice as I start typing it's picking up some keywords and saying are these what you're looking for? You can select these as well if you wanted to and it will just run Properly. Great, that's great. Okay, so um, is uh, my result set. So you can see at the top of the page here, I've got my number of results. On the left hand side, we have some refinement options, and to the right hand side, we ha again have some useful resources that will take us into some additional content here as well. I'm going to come on to this um, first option here. So when you do run a search on ES, we have these um, items called research starters. So this Islamic finance is part of our um, research starter collection. And this is sort of like a an overview or a topic overview that you sim similar to what you would find in, say, Wikipedia. It's just more authoritative because they're coming from places like Salem Press, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, National Biography and those types of resources. To access these, click on the title link. Available in HTML full text. So text we'll have a look at in this session, HTML and PDF. As we scroll down, um, this is my topic of Islamic finance. It provides quite a good overview, a particular topic, and also get a bibliography at the end as well. Because this particular resource is available in HTML full text, we can also we've also embedded some additional features. One of those is a translate tool. So you can translate um, the language into uh, another option here. Just going to quickly translate this to show you. And then navigate back to the original language. And if you scroll down, um, if it's in English, it has a text-to-speech function. So it will read this, the text out to you um, in three different accents. Um, and it will all, you can also adjust some of the settings here as well. So the word color, sentence color, the text color, reading speed, etc., are all available here. The other thing that I like about this HTML full text is that you can download the audio file to listen offline. So if you Preferring to some articles before you go to bed at night, uh, you can do that with the HTML full text. The other thing whilst I'm in this um, record is also in what we call a detailed record or the act record. So that HTML is embedded within that record. To the right-hand side, once I'm in here, I have some tools I can use to work with this record. So we do have an option where we can save citations information directly to Google Drive. So if you do have a Gmail email address and password uh, or email account, it will allow you to sign in here your credentials and then in your Google Drive it will have a, a play EBSCO folder in there and store the information in that Google Drive in the cloud for you rather than having to sign in. Um, there is also the uh, the options. Um, there are also some print options. I can print out this article. I can email it to myself and I will receive the HTML full text when available. And if it was PDF, I would also receive the PDF. I can save this information to my desktop. Generate an end text citation for this in nine different referencing styles. 
Eddie APA, which is now APA7 if you're using that particular version, um, and then Chicago, Heart Australian, Heart Chicago, MLA and Vancouver are also available. You can copy and paste those into a Word document. So an export tool. So if you use a bibliographic manager like EndNote or Zotero or any of these options, you can export the citations over that, that manager. I also now allow for downloading citation data to Excel via CSV. That's also an option there too. We also have these options to create notes. So the notes allow you to create little annotations on articles. So just create note here. So make annotations about different articles that I might find in my session save this and then what you can see here is that I have an option to print out my list of notes so when I'm in a session and I'll talk about sessions in a moment as well I could have a few different articles that I found I might have made a few notes on them and if my browser allows save as PDF as you can see here mine does as well as the normal option I will get um, the title details of the article I also get a permalink to go back to that article and I will also see my annotations. So I can quickly print that list out as a PDF or hard copy and just keep it there and go back to those articles and check my notes here as well. So I'm just going to head back to that main screen here. And underneath the note option we have a permalink. So I will just mention our URL at the top here has a session managed ID which basically means if I close my browser Unless I've signed into an account, uh, my searches and everything have, have gone. Um, but I, so if I wanted to share this uh, research data with someone else, I would need to look for the permalink and not the URL up here. So the permalink will just give me a direct link and I copy that and I could then share that with somebody and they could come back to this page. I'm prompted to um, sign in here to Insight as well tools and features available in those records. Um, if any questions, please let me know. Just through the main page and back into my slide deck. Thing I'm going to do is run a search for a known item. So I'm actually looking for something called Islamic Finance Principles and Practice by Hans Visa. So from the main page in Discovery, I um, run a title search. And because I know the author, I could run an author as well. So I'll do a search. I could also, I could also put in um, the author, but it looks like I don't have to because it's found that one for me pretty immediately. So what I did with that search is I've used the title drop down. So I could keyword title or author and I've put the keywords for the title in here. So this is where it's finding that information. It's saying okay this must be the book you're looking for because that's the title field um, and that matches that exactly. So I've got that as number one there. So what I can do here is I can check to see where that book's available. Click on show more. I can see here um, the location Status and it's also an electronic resource, an ebook, and I can see that it's available from ebook ProQuest Pro ebook central. I can click on that link to access the book. I can also retrieve the catalogue record for that book as well. I may prompt it to sign in here somewhere um, to get a bit of detail about that. So I'm finding a known item and then where I can go to actually access that. Okay, and the last quick so I'm going to do is an advanced search using the advanced search screen so the one with the three rows and I'm going to run just um, an advanced search on COVID-19 and the impact of this on the economy so I'm going to head back to EDS uh, here we go just going to do an advanced search here um, so what I'm going to do here is just use the rows to build up my search. So um, 
COVID-19 and the impact on the economy. So just start to build that up. You're typing that I'm getting some hints. So I might actually use that. So I want articles that mention COVID-19 or coronavirus or meant 2019-NCOV. Um, then here I'll start to type in, so this is where we'll truncate it. I'll use my truncation here so that it's looking for economy, economics, economies, uh, et cetera. And I can continue to build this up, so, uh, and so on and so forth. And I can continue to build that up as well. I could add some additional rows in here um, and just sort of can start search up. So once I've completed these options, I'm also going to leave these in the selector field. So by default, if I leave this blank at selector field, EBSCO will look for these keywords in the title, the author, the subject, the abstract, and the general keywords. Um, and so I've put those on search. If I wanted to kind of, um, I guess, qualify the search, I could specify a particular field. So if I just wanted these to appear in the subject term field, then I could limit it down that way. I'm going to... So where on the left-hand side, I can begin to sort of refine my results as well. Hello? Hello? Yeah, trying to uh, follow you to see if I can, uh, um, you know, I can access the same document by uh, COVID-19 coronavirus and uh, no results found. So uh, did you go to advanced search? So this is what I've put in. Okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Please keep moving. <laughs> That's all right. Um, all right. You can have a play. You can have a play around and see if it works for you. Um, so once we've put in the keywords, uh, everything kind of sits here in the current search box. Basically what it's showing me is my search. And it's showing me mm -hmm. those default expanders that we had on there before. Okay. And down, I get some limiter options. So this is where I could limit my results down to show me just items that are available in full text online. And I find that it will take some of those results out. And it has, um, you can see my limiter is now sitting in my bread box, and I can toggle that off, which I will. That will go back to that original search. I also restrict my results down to catalog only. There may not be any for this one because it's, yeah, because it's quite, um, it's very recent. Although it depends if that information is in something in that catalog or not. Um, okay for a sec. And another limiter as well called available in the library collection. Sort of, it's sort of full text, but um, and you can see the results are very similar as well. Um, but you might find some differences between full text and available in the library every now and then. Um, it just depends on what's in each collection. Uh, so if you did select both of these, then you you can do this. What it will do is it will do an OR search. So it will look for articles that are flagged as full text online or articles that are part of the, the library collection. So it's basically going to give you an OR search and include both if you have to do this. Just know <laughs> that's how that works. Um, so that's my kind of limited options here. I've got 138,000, still a lot of results really for something that's. Um, Quote. Um, if we scroll down, I can see, oh, A42 is my publication date. And bearing in mind that it is picking up the keyword of coronavirus, which has been around for quite some time. So I mentioned before that you could also um, use the not if you want to. So putting in a term that you didn't want to appear in your results. Um, I've got it up here. So it's probably picking up um, some of those older things. A note on the publication dates as well. Thinking, well, I don't think we're electronic journals back in 1842, and you would be correct. So what happens with these publication dates is that the publishers say, right, well, this is when the particular resource was published, so that's what we're going to include in the metadata of the article. So you can see the publication date here. System filters on that, and that's why you might see some, some publication dates that look a bit odd, but that, that's, what, that's the original publication date for this particular resource, whatever it might be.
Um, and then here you can also uh, change the publication date. So let's say I just wanted to look at you know, 20, or maybe 2019 actually, 2019 to 2020. I can type in my 2019, click my mouse out, it will update those results. And I haven't really any loss of results for that. Um, also click and drag the slider across as well to just adjust the date ranges. Then there is also a show more option just takes us back to that first page where we had the um, on the, the very first search before we put our keywords in where it shows us the limiter options. So you can actually go back to that and apply some additional sort of limit like institutional repository records or you could limit to a, a language here as well um, or those collections. Um, so it's just another set of limiters that you could apply. There are also here a limiter or a facet called source types. So from my search results, these are different uh, source types or formats, if you will, of results. So if I click on show more, I can see the top six here. If I click on more, I can see up to the top 50. There's usually not 50 types, just to let you know, um, but you can see some different options here. So if I wanted to limit just to academic journals, I could do that and we'll know that my results will then show me 186. They're all from um, academic journal source type. A little bit far there, so I'm going to toggle that one off. Um, the small subset of results gets, and the more specific. And down here we have our subjects. So I would say, well, all right, based on my results, these are the different subject headings that have come through. And you can see some different things here. So if I click again on my show more, this is the up to the top 50. By default, EBSCO will always rank these by hit count. So COVID-19 had the most prevalent subheading or subject term in results, followed by the COVID-19 pandemic. So I could just pick and choose the options here that are relevant. So if I didn't want North America included, I could not include that. Um, I might look at stock changes, I might look at finance, trade, non Trump, a research and markets. Oh, I'll pick a few options here. Here I can pick and choose basically the different um, subject headings that might be relevant here. Economic impact. There we go. Update. So you'll find that this will then again refine results, but just to those selected search headings that I selected there. So now they're a little more relevant to my search because they're based on the keywords I'm actually looking for. And they're all listed here for me as well. So I can toggle these off too if I wanted to. And then if I could limit to my results from a particular publication. So you can see Bloomberg, we've got Bond Buy, we've got Forbes. Again, if I click Show More, I'm going again up to the top 50 based on my results and where those records are coming from. So if I want to just look at articles from New Scientist, I can opt for that and click my update. Or a few options from the list as well. And then, so we do publish in over 30 different languages. So you will see some options here depending on your results. Um, so clicking on show more may show us a few more. We can limit down to those options as well. Also a geography limiter. So um, a ge geographic term, if you will, that's read to that article. For example, I might, might limit to China or I might limit to Italy or Japan. And again, if I click on show more, I see um, a larger list of options. But by publisher, in EDS, because I am searching across different resources, both EBSCO and non-EBSCO, I can actually limit down to a particular database or provider. So I can see Science Direct, for example. I can business source Corporate Plus. We can show more. I'll see up to, um, I'll see all the options available in this search. So, and here's my research data again <laughs> coming up for that. Um, limited just to Business Source Corporate Plus. Than from that database. The next thing I would show you whilst we're in this search set of uh, limited result results 
um, I've got here the database. And these are those hyperlinked database names that I was mentioning before. So if you see these, you can click on them and it will take you out of EBSCO Discovery Service and over into the, I'm just going to prop me right in, um, but over into the actual database itself. So it would actually open up in Business Corporate Plus and continue searching on that platform run EDS. And I'm going to show you some of the, the features of Business Source Corporate Plus in this session as well. Um, kind of running an advanced search using the advanced fields um, and then applying some limiters. And I just now wanted to talk a little bit about these options here. So, um, as I mentioned before, the default sort order is relevant. You can also sort by your date newest, date oldest, this which is the name of the publication, for example, Metal Bulletin, um, the author. Um, there's also some page options here. So you can adjust how many results per page you can see. So a maximum of 50, the current is 10. And the share button, you can set an email alert on these results as well. So if we go on email alert, it will prompt me to sign into a folder. So this is my EBSCO host account. Up now. So if you did want to set up a folder, you can do so. I've got an account. Just scroll down to under the sign button. I click on get one now. So here you need to provide some details um, in this option. Or if you have a Gmail account, you can also opt to sign up with Google. It will just prompt you for your Gmail email address and password, and that will then be your account details for EBSCO as well. So I'm just going to quickly set up an option using the form. Set up an alert for me. One thing that I mentioned is that it does have to have a unique username, so nobody else in Evo can be using the same username as you. So if it's not correct, it will come back and say try again. Also, with the password, it has to fit that criteria. So Six character minimum, one bar, and at least one special character. It contains something easy to guess, like your username or email address. So that, I've got the two green ticks. I can then proceed. I can set my secret question, and I answer. I have to provide consent. So this is something that we can't really avoid. Um, to be this. And this this is part of the GDPR, so the General Data Protection Regulation Policy. So we do need to provide consent in order to proceed with this. And we also prov provide some information around what information we do collect and how we use it. You may also view our per data collection and usage policy here as well. If you're okay with that, you can click Continue. And that is set up. you to sign in immediately here. If I click sign in, my browser so it's easy to do and I'll just sign into my account. Creating an alert, it's taking me back to the alert page and from here I can put in my email address. This is sort of a mandatory field. I could add multiple people in here if I wanted to share the same search results out. I get my frequency, so this will be an email that comes to you. So you don't want to receive an email once a day. You might want to receive an email maybe every week or once a month, depending on your research area. And you can set the recency of the articles that have been published as well. I'm just to mute everybody to make sure that um, there's no feedback coming through, so sorry about that. Um, and under here, so I can say, well, I only want articles that have been published in the last month, so really recent content on this. Um, or I could say, no limit, and they can send you everything that's published that matches that energy um, here. One last. Uh, and then I can save my alert. Alert's done. Uh, you'll receive an email a notification about that alert, and you'll start to receive those emails coming through as well.
um, the button that was setting up the email alert and there is also the permalink so you can copy this permalink a bit like the one from the detailed record but this is going to take you back to this search and the results so you can have that a bit like a canned search if you will because um, you could then go back to these different results and it will refresh when new articles are matching that as well advanced search and some of the tools available to use um, on time I'm going to run another advanced search um, just a slightly different way of running it to run it using the basic search and then I'm going to combine my searches so I'm going to be looking for um, economic growth as a concept export and I'm going to sort of trunk that and the vector error correction model so I'm going to come back here search and to enter in my keywords. So the first thing I'm looking for is economic growth. May add some different concepts in here as well if I wanted to. Some individual concepts. So just, you know, I'm going to get a lot of results back because it is quite a broad result, or quite a broad search, and I can see I'm getting a research data for that. So back to the my next one will be export truncated. And the results coming back for that. Then will be the vector error correction model. And you can see it's picking up this as well, but I'm actually going to do just up kind of both options and then I'm going to search and that's concepts so I've got my three concepts listed there I'm just going to go back to basic search for a second so that just clears out my search and I'm going to go into my search history so let's go everything I've been searching is tied to this session URL see it's logged in here in reverse chronological order so that means I can and you'll scroll down we can see my, my search here my COVID search my limiters or my list so it just builds up on that search through this search history so this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my individual concepts I'm going to go and I'm going to use the boolean and to focus and narrow them down So 54,000 results, but you would have noticed that there was a lot of results coming back for the individual searches. So create some more sort of specific searches, sort of narrows and focuses everything down. And I could then apply some different results, um, requirement options here as well. Um, what with this, and if I go back to basic search, I concept it in. So I'm not finding exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe I've decided I want to add something else in. I'm just going to add in um, GP. Lots of results coming back for that one. And history. And what you'll see now is that this one's now an S10, so search 10, 11, and 12. And I can combine this in this search as well. So just, um, it's an advanced way of searching, but it will allow you to kind of build on the concepts and it's not all in the one search. So if something isn't coming back correctly or you're getting some errors or it's saying we can't find anything, you can pick apart your search and rerun them that way as well. It also allows you to save your searches. So um, you've got to not save. So if I have this recent search, I can save searches and alerts. I'll show you to go and set up the alert, but this can also be a saved search. So you could save your search here as well. Of, of doing some advanced searching. I've talked a little bit here about the folders. Um, the next thing we're going to have a look at is that. Uh, so this is finding an ebook. So there's an ebook that I want to find called Essentials of Risk Management in Finance. 
and I'm just going to show you what this looks like. I'll search for this one. And my search history off. Once it's open, it sort of sticks around there. What you're looking for? It's coming from the ebook collection from EBSCO. And I've got two options on the screen and a PDF and an EPUB. I also browse the table of contents directly from here as well. Just maybe a book I do want to read. Um, I can also look at the most relevant pages from that book. It's picky words essentially. Um, table of contents and I click on an option here let's say risk frameworks and standards it's actually going to load that book for me in the online reader so it's going into the book into that um, I can read that book online so that's finding an ebook directly from the EDS interface um, I've got I've got a section on ebooks specifically so I just wanted to sort of show you the feature if you are in it's got a free service that is how you would access the book. So table of contents will take you into it, or you can click on one of these options. So PDF or EPUB, I go back to that viewer. You'll just end on the, the page, the very first page. That's it. Okay, thing we're going to do is look for a publication. So I want an actual, um, you know, that I'm looking for a magazine, if you will. So we're looking for Harvard Business Review here. Basic search. Type keywords. And that's what you can see. It's saying, is this the journal that you're looking for, Harvard Business Review? I can click on that. in here where I can then access the full text. And I can see that this is indexed in Business Source Corporate Plus from 1922 to the present. So clicking that will take me out into Business Source Corporate Plus where I can access the full text for that particular resource. If I, oops, if I head back, I search within the publication. So this will provide me with results um, within EDS. So I'm going to look for the keywords of finance or with publication. Results, and you'll notice that they are all coming from Harvard's Review. Um, the EBSCO Discovery Service, if there's any questions, please do let me know. I think I've muted everybody on the, on the line. So if you do have a question, for free to mute yourself. You can find the mute button at the top of the screen. Um, or you can also send me through a chat if you would like to as well. I'll very briefly touch on EBSCO's new mobile app. So this is very new. It came out a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I would just mention it here. So it is available on the Google Store for Android devices. Oh, I've had a question. Which better, sorry, a better title search? It depends what you're looking for, honey. So um, my examples, because I knew it was a book sentence, I, that the title would be, so those words were in the title. Therefore, if I use that option, it's going to give me a more direct search. Uh, the keyword is good if you're wanting to go broad. I hope that makes sense. A little bit about field codes um, database sessions. Um, but if I come to the advanced, for example, instructing the system to look for keywords in a particular field of an article. So I find if it's an exact known, if it's an exact item that I want, it's here to type in a few words in the title, you can find it quicker. Um, checked area. If I just put in finance, I'm going to get a lot of results. So if I, I tie up a little bit by restricting the search, um, I'll have a more direct hit. Question. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it's a mobile app, so you can go and download it now. Um, like I said, Google Play for Android devices or the App Store for iOS devices. Um, please note for Google, it is version 11 above on Android, and for iOS, it's version 11 and above that will work with it. Um, once you've downloaded and installed, this is what it looks like. Um, so it is sort of different in taste to what EBSCO looks like now, um, but you can run your searches, you can have your accounts set up as well. So you can sync your favorite results um, into the folder option like I've just shown you directly from the app. Okay, so any questions, please do let me know. Okay, we'll just move along now to um, the databases. So this time we're going to have a look um, at the specific databases. We're going to start with Business Source Corporate Plus. This is, as the name suggests, a business database. It is full text. It is um, available for a wide range of markets and different applications. So it's really comprehensive. It's a full text magazines and journals across all different types of departments from risk management through to sales and marketing. List of leading business magazines, as I mentioned before, Harvard Business Review is on there from 1922 to the present. It also includes Forbes, Bloomberg, Fortune, among others. Trade publications in different industries as well. find that it has a lot of full text management magazines and journals. Pull interest to like New Scientist, which I would have seen in my results before, Time, um, No Review, and those types of titles, The Atlantic. Head over into um, the platform shortly, but this next few slides are really about some of the unique features on here. So I mentioned before, EDS is great. You can find the content. Um, the database itself has some additional features that I wanted to cover in this session. Um, so the company information is a unique um, tab in Business Source Corporate Plus. It contains information on around 1.17 million companies and they are including the complete hierarchical corporate families. It means you can look for parents and subsidiaries in there. The records are organized by 50% the top U companies ranked by revenue and 50% international ranked by revenue. Um, the title is comprised of 70% of public and 30% private. Also, in addition to the company information tab, there are company profiles. So Business Source Corporate Plus provides over 13,800 market line company profiles. So market line provides the information to us. So from market line, profiles are available for the 12,500 largest companies in the world and profiles for the top 900 private companies. And will also find SWOT analyses for more than 5,000 companies as well. On the key company information, you'll find things like facts, the business description, um, competitors, you'll find major products and services that the company provides and their locations and subsidiaries. The data also provides comprehensive country, industry, and market research data. So I've mentioned the company profiles, but you'll also find some limiters for industry reports, market research reports, and also country reports. A number of options available in the database. So I guess sort of non-journal content as well. So things like conference papers and proceedings. Various providers, uh, including the American Marketing Association, the Association for Consumer Research, etc. Head over into a live demonstration of Business Source Corporate Plus. Um, I do have some sample searches to go through here as well. So let me just um, go and get into the database. I hope this hasn't timed me out, but we will soon see. So now that I'm in the database, um, you will notice it does look a little bit different to ES. Same options, so you still got your search options, you still have your advanced search, you can still use the search history that I've shown you. It's just that when you're in the database, you've got some other sort of tools that I'll go through as well. So I'm going to have a look at here is the company information tab. 
This is the information that I mentioned that's 50% um, percent oh, why is that doing that? Let me just do that. Okay. That the company information is at 1.17 million companies. So company information or data companies. So here we can enter in a company name. We can enter in the ultimate parent if we know it. We can enter a ticker symbol if we know it, or we could do a general keyword search. So to run a search first of all on the Keppel Corporation. So I can enter in the company that I might be looking for and see if it's available in the company information tab. So I can see that Keppel Corporation is available. I'm also not seeing any other companies, so it's quite a specific company. Sometimes you'll put a company name in and you'll find lots of options. Um, I can see also a Singapore country and I can see its revenue data. So on the name of the company, it do this information. It gives me some details about the company, like its line of business, new data, its website, uh, its physical address. And a little bit further, I get information around the executive board, the industry that it covers, and these are links to articles using the North American Industry Classification System codes that are relevant to this particular company. This will run a search and find articles relating to these um, NCS codes. I could also um, have a look at the SIC codes assigned to this company as well. In the more section, I get some info like the year it was founded, the relation type. In this case, it's not a subsidiary company, it's a parent company, and the unique EBSCO company number. With this information as well, um, I've got all the tools available in the detailed record like we saw previously in EDS, exactly the same. But in this tab, I have a download CSV option. So I can download and export that new data over to Excel. So I'll a couple of companies here and pull across you know, this information that's coming from that company information tab. First kind of company info here, uh, like I said, if you type in companies, you might find you've got a big list, in which case you could narrow down using the um, parent option if needed as well. What we're going to have a look at is the company profile. So these are the options provided to EBSCO via MarketLine and also MedTrack. Um, so I'm going to, again, search on Keppel. I'm just going to click on New Search. Um, under the More tab, you've got Company Profile. So a Browse option where I can browse from A through to Z um, all of the different um, companies to look at. I know I'm looking for Keppel, so I'm just going to type them in. An operation appears here. And it is to one, to industry is finance, the location is Singapore, and I can click on the market line report. All these reports are available in PDF and size, depending on the size of the company. And because this one is 32 pages in length. Things. Company profile reports give you the company overview, key facts about the company, a description of their business, their history, their employees plus a biography of their employees, the age of products and services. Which you, can see. you also get a SWOT analysis included as well. well you have a broad SWOT and then it will it out a little bit further here too. Get, um, the location of subsidiaries and the company view information as well. They're quite comprehensive reports. Um, particularly useful around like the top competitors. So who are, you know, the following companies that are competitors of this particular company? So you could go ahead and run some searches in our uh, business source core plus and the company information tab for these guys, as well as in the um, the company profiles as well. On that note, we are now going to run a bit of a company comparison between Keppel Corporation and Semcorp. So I'm going to go back here. 
go to New Search. So I'll go to Advanced Search for this option because I'm going to use my, my fields here to search. So first of all, and here, um, SEMCORP Industries, just have to make sure I spot that right. So I'm going to search on this. I'm not selecting a field here, just going to keep it blank. And your results. So I'm getting now results coming from, you know, news content. I'll find articles in here as well. What I'm actually looking for are my SWOT analyses. And I can see here I've got two SWOTs. So what I can do is just click on those or add them to a folder. But you can see in my source types, my analyses appear here. So I'm just finding this down. So I've got 51 for both of these companies and the most recent ones are always at the top. So I can look at both of these and compare the two companies that way. I can go back in time and look at some older options as well. In the list of source types, you'll also see that there are some options for newspapers, we've got magazines, we've got trade publications, industry profiles are another option. industry profile around energy consumption in Singapore. This particular company is Singaporean. Further focus that down through the SORI terms. Uh, I've got a question. Does the company report updated yearly? Yeah, so um, I'll have to get the exact date. I never remember the exact publishing or publication dates that we get them from market line. But they are updated. I feel like once a year. And so you'll find um, even in the the probably the sort the spots are probably the best one to have a look at. But you'll see that the dates I think maybe around like lane so to be due for an update shortly, I believe. I'll find out exactly the um, the schedule for you and let you know. The options go to show more quickly as well, just to show you some other options. So um, there are reports as well as any one. Let's have a look. Of course, you know what you're searching for too. This is actually picking up um, India. If I'm um, kind of running a comparison on different companies. You know, if you had a few companies as well, you could use that advanced search and do what I did with the or and filter to your source types as well. While we're in the advanced screen here, I also wanted to mention a couple of things down in the limiter section, because these are a little bit hidden. So there's some really useful things in here, such as the publication type and document type options. In the publication type, you can actually limit down to things like trade publications, primary source documents, interfiles and country reports. So that I did just an industry profile, I can select it here. And I have a search button. This will go through and retrieve um, all the articles that are considered this industry profile. What I can do is I could put some keywords in, or I could use my left hand side option, thorus term, or perhaps object area. So maybe I was looking at example mobile apps. My industry profiles for mobile apps here is coming from Market Line. So, um, and it's available in both HTML and PDF. So uh, I'll go to the top link here. And here's the market line injury profile report. I encourage you to have a play around with some of those limiters. I'm going to go back to that now. There's a couple of other ones in here that I think are useful to know about. Application type houses some of them to reports as well. Document type is the other place that you can go to have a look at some um, specific document type limiters. So things like case studies, study on finance, keywords in, or I can put no keywords in and just click the search button and use those um, subject heading filters. So they are picking up um, case studies on the topic of finance. You can hear document type. 
um, that's where you offer case study options. Again, um, and then if we scroll down a little bit further, you find things like your company reports, your conference papers. Again, so it's indexed in both of those options there. Um, you will also find your injury overviews. So again, click on it on search, and it will go back and bring all those options for you. Legal materials, lesson plans. Uh, video reviews in here, uh, and working papers as well. Search in this industry. This is the overview. And again, what you could do is apply the option on the left-hand side. By name here, Thing on that name will just alphabetically list them for you rather than hit count. So say, And let's look at equipment and supplies. <laughs> I'll just update that. Else here. For that particular subject area. So there's that you'll find in the advanced search. So they are a little bit hidden, um, but I do encourage you to have a look through them. There's some really useful options. So next I wanted to touch on was some more advanced searching tips for EBSCO databases, and that's using some field codes. So I sort of talked before about using the title in EDS or the keyword or the author. So you can also do that in the databases, um, but they, they will provide you with a few more options than what you see in EDS, simply because we can pull out the content a little bit easier. So in our menu, you'll notice in Business or Corporate Plus that there's quite a substantial list of options. Um, one of them that's good if you are doing some company research is company entity field. I'm going to pick on Capital Corporation again. So what this will do is run a search in the database and look for articles where Keppel Corporation has been mentioned. So I'm going to what's here. Um, let's find that it's more of an article. Okay, yeah. Um, going to click on this. So it's looking in this field here, this company entity field, and it's picking up that Keppel Corp listed. So I know that this article is about this particular company. And you come up with a few different companies as well. See the kind of news items that are out there about them. Um, see what type of reach has been happening. You see what areas that they're working in. I an environmental scan of a particular company. Um, in addition to what you see in the drop down, a lot. So again, geographic terms are a good one. So if you're wanting to put in your CERN limited to a geographic region. You can be keywords as well. Uh, it's looking for, for a fee here called geographic terms and up Malaysia here. So it's just a way of, of, kind of finding information that's quite specific to your to your needs. Um, all right, so back at search, it keeps flicking me back to the basic, but um, there is a lot of them here. I'm not going to go through all of them for you, but I will show you some other options. So in the top of the screen, there's a big help button to the far right. If you help, it will turn into an EBSCO host help. Very bottom of this page, you'll see database help and the database help for Business Source Corporate Plus. So if you about the database, what it covers, what its focus is, we'll get searching tips, and then searchable fields. So you'll notice that there are a lot of options in this list, the drop-down menu as well. So you can create a very advanced search using a lot of these different um, field codes. And also, if you're not sure what some of the field codes mean in the drop-down menu, this um, help guide gives you an overview of them finding information quickly and easily. Something that I do like, I'm just going to scroll to the top, sorry about all the scrolling, um, are these author affiliation. I actually prefer the word indexed. Um, I'm actually going to run a search for author affiliation. We're going to type it in safe as well. Use the field codes. If they're not in the drop down, always keep this as selector field. And the field code is um, uppercase letter. 
entry into the database as you see here. You probably don't need to use your double question mark, so I'm just doing it out of course. Found 146 articles in this database. We're an author affiliated um, here. So I'm going to click on the top link. And I first author is affiliated with NC. Um, and if we scroll down, what it, where it's picking up that information is this field here, authorations. And I can see the affiliated with the Research Management Centre and author is affiliated with Taylor's Business School. So this is just a way of finding information um, or research that's been conducted or where you know, these have been affiliated with a particular institution, organisation or company. And you can hear here as well. Uh, the um, searchable fields are our field codes, and as I mentioned, you can tap through those and build up quite a complex search strategy that way. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you actually in this database is just the thesaurus. Business Source Corporate Plus does have a thesaurus. This is a list of controlled terms. So let's say I was looking for information on finance. I can finance is indexed here as a control term. And I can also see that there's an explode button here, which usually means there's going to be some related terms or some narrower terms under finance. So in here, what it's showing me is these very specific thesaurus terms. So you can build a search up using this as well. Say um, I've got finance here. I want to look at business. So I can select my term and I can put that term into find here. Put the DE field code in here to say it's a controlled term and I search. So what I'm going to do is find me all the articles that have this particular system assigned to it. So it's a way of creating a more specific search because you're looking at not a keyword search, it's a very specific um, term that's been used to describe the article. Scroll down, I can narrow again by my thesaurus term or my subject headings as well. So thesaurus terms are always more specific. They're a set of control terms where our subject headings are a little broader. And you know, if you wanted to build a search up using the thesaurus as well, you could also use your search history here, like we saw in EDS, um, but you could apply think back with this, it might be too specific, but um, and business budgeting, nothing found there. Um, but you can play around with some of those options in the thesaurus as well. well thing here is publications. So browse through an alphabetical list of all the publications you're searching on in Business Source Corporate Plus. So I'm going to look for Harvard Business Review because my example. Um, I can see we've got a few options, but I'm going to use this one. I can also see that I've got bibliographic records from 1922 to the present, but also full text 1922 to the present in PDF and HTML. So I'm going to click on the name the record for Harvard Business Review. And here through volumes and issues. So if I wanted to look at July, August, 2020, okay. 30 articles from that particular um, an issue. And I've got PDF full text. Patients, um, if I just head back, so if I've got a folder, before we can create those folders, I can save, set up an email alert on this publication so I'm notified the next time a new volume and issue is published as well. I have to have a folder in order to do this um, and I can also save that permalink. I can also search within the publication, so very similar to what we saw in EDS. I'm going to pull across, have a business review. Um, I'll do the exact same so I did in EDS, um, so my and in. Um, and then the finance. And they're all from that particular publication. 
um, was Business Source Corporate. Is there any questions on anything covered there? Okay, I'm going to touch very quickly on Finance Source. So this database supports the career development needs of accounting and finance professionals. So it includes articles from a wide range of industries and provides insights into best practices across the discipline. So it's a little bit different um, than some of the other databases, but let's have a quick look at this. So I'm going to choose databases, and we search all these databases um, once if we wanted to. I'm just going into each one individually to show some of the, the key features. So I'm going to click OK here. Very similar, but it doesn't have a publication search and doesn't have the um, company information or company profiles. However, it's a, a very specific source in that it does have um, quite information relating to those particular discipline areas of finance. So for example, I'm going to type in finance as a general keyword search. And results here. On the side, I can begin to apply my filters. So I've got my areas, my parameter, Publishing, and the NAICS codes. Go to the top of the screen. There is also an advanced search here. So I field codes. It's similar to what we saw in Business Source, and again, the help guide will give you the full list of the field codes in here. So we can also apply. Um, The author affiliation code, it does work in this database. So we'll then find the results in this database um, here as well. Search for this uh, net source. If we go down here, we can document type limiters, book chapters, book reviews, and case studies, and we have our publication type. And we also have the option to limit to articles where a comprehension test is available. Um, so let's say I wanted to look up some information on finance or finance, whatever the, the keywords are that you choose to apply. Um, I then get my results here. And it's down to um, articles that extra information around them. Full text here. Yeah. So then test available with this particular option. Um As in terms of searching, um, searching this database is exactly the same as searching all the other databases. Um, there are just a couple of things that are, I didn't show you in the other database, such as cited references. So this one, you can type in an author, a cited title, a cited year, um, a source, so a publication name, or any type of field that you want in here as well, and see if there's any articles that cite um, a particular author. So you can have options in the list here. If to find one uh, checkbox, and I can go and review some of those citing articles. So they're citing um, this particular author. Um, the last thing in here is really just an image browse as well. So you can also browse for articles that have an image assigned to them, like a color photograph or a chart or a diagram or an illustration. The database we're going to look at is something called Open Dissertations. So this is an open access database. It's a free database. Um, it includes the content from American doctoral dissertations and it now contains 
collect more than 1 to 2 million electronic theses and dissertations from around the world. So it's a great resource actually for finding what type of research is coming out in different areas. And I'm just going to jump into open dissertations here. to the standard database searching that we've done, um, but let's say I typed in in um, finance I've thought so what we're seeing here is that the publication type will be a dissertation or a thesis you also see the handle the URL handle so all of the information in here is come from different universities institutional repositories is the handle here. So some of these um, results will be available in full text and some of them won't be. It just depends on how um, that particular university has made that content available. Um, you can also limit to the university as well. So in here, so I'll just run a very brief, um, but I see the universities here. If you show more, I can through all the different universities and limit down to them. So let's say I was looking at the City University in London. That results. Okay. And now results coming from that particular um, university and handle. So if I click on that handle, directed me now into their IR, saying that I can download it immediately, but I may need to log in. And then depending on each univer participating university's um, requirements. Great website about this, project itself. So I'm just going to show you, it's Biblio Board. And so overview here about the project itself. So you can actually search the dissertations database um, through the web as well, um, but it gives some information for libraries and universities, for authors, and how to, people can join the Open Dissertations Project. So the databases available from MEPSCO. Please let me know. Is there any period for the magazines in BSC? That's a good question. So they vary depending on um, the the public what they allow. So the best way to check it. I just, is to go to that publications tab. I don't know if you've got a magazine in mind, but let's pick up, I don't know, let's put in Bloomberg. Um, if it does have an embargo, it will tell you here. So it would say publicly 12 months um, or whatever it might be. Just not many. When I'm looking for them, I can never find them. Coming off the top of my head here. Um, yes. Here you go. So national Affairs, for example, I'm the journal, but it just, again, it depends on the title. So just check this. This is the best place to check. Um, and also get a title list um, on this as well if you type in Business Source Corporate Plus. Right in here, the type. So go to journals, go into Excel, and it will show you there the start and the stop date and if there are embargoes. Um, otherwise, you can look title, title, as on here. That you wanted to check, you could check them in here. So this one, for example, it's available from 1975 to the present, but there is an embargo, which you can see here. It's dependent on the, the publication and the publisher restrictions. Question. I, Hello. So when uh, will the recording be available? What, sorry? When will uh, the recording section will be available to us to watch? I'll send it out to you guys um, after the session. So I just have to get it from... Um, the uh, WebEx portal. Okay. All right. No. You're welcome. Just give me one moment. Okay.
Okay. Our session is um, going to focus on EBSCO eBooks. Asked uh, about some of the, I guess, the features and functionality. I've shown you very briefly how to get some access from EDS or EBSCO Discovery Service, but they're also available on the EBSCO host platform. So I'm really going to focus on the difference between EPUB and PDF, how you can go and save email and print portions of an eBook. Uh, I can sort of save those into your folder as well. So let's just jump into eBook platform. So like this, you'll get some thumbnails about eBooks here. You'll also get some high level categories that you can browse through. So if we went to business and economics, for example, with 300 books available in here. Similar to what we saw, in fact, I think this is the exact same book that we saw on EDS. Uh, and again, you've got your table of contents and you have or EPUB links well. Um, I'm going to open up this book in PDF. I'll click on that option for me. And what else? It gives publisher permissions. So these will vary book to book and depending on the publisher and what they allow. But it's, I can print, email and save up to 60 pages. I copy and paste this book. Um, definitely applicable here. Um, I can also see that this has um, a one book, one user copy and I'm currently in a copy at the moment. I um, also see here if I open up my table of contents, beside each chapter I have this download chapter icon. If I click that, I can see that I can export or save the chapter. So this chapter is 24 pages, which is well within my 60 page limit. Download that PDF. Once it downloads the PDF, it takes it outside of EBSCO. So it's no longer in EBSCO, but I can those 60 pages outside. It's now in PDF and I can then download it and save it or I could print it out. So the chapter. I see a little bit of copyright information across the left hand side and across the bottom. Um, but that book, those chapters will never expire. They're outside of EBSCO now. So I now have that chapter that I can go and read um, offline. I've still got a few pages left here as well. So I may be able to get a couple of chapters um, with my, my six page limit. Maybe not all of this one. Uh, and that's just using the chapter exports. There is also an option to use the save pages, the email pages, the print pages. Google Drive in the same way. You'd just be picking and choosing your pages here. So I could do a section which is like a chapter or I could do a current page plus the next um, 20 pages. Again, I'm saving those outside of EBSCO. Just give me the same option. It's just a slightly different way. It's not the full chapter this time. I've just picked and sort of pick and choose the options that I want from there. And you'll also notice that I my public permissions have, have sort of calculated here as well. So to email pages, it's the same option. Print page the same, and drive will be the same. So a cite tool, so the end text citation can be copied from here. There's an inbuilt dictionary as well, so you can look up terms. Um, Governor example, um, I could exportation to a bibliographic manager. I can get a permalink to the book, and the permalink takes us to the page level. That's that's basically the options. So this is a PDF version of an ebook. So what this means is that I've got a full scroll through the whole book, from the very first cover all the way to the end. I've also got some navigation here where I can in and out. Full screen, available from the bottom of the screen there. That's the EPUB, uh, the PDF. I'm now going to come into the results set and show you the EPUB version. So here, I'm going to click on the EPUB. So it's the uh, ebook publishing format standard. Um, so what you'll find with this is that I don't get a full scroll through the whole book. I get the first page and then I'll need to navigate using the options within the reader itself. So um, of book is on HTML, so it fits and formats to any device. 
device that you're on, from a laptop or an iPad or a phone, it fits in formats. So you'll also probably notice that there's no page numbers here. So this is pretty standard for EPUB, the bits and flows and formats to whatever device that you're on. So if I um, navigate down into a section of the book here, to get the page number, you really guess it's ready, but I can go to the permalink and that I get that page number here. The of course, is to use the chapter export. And you may also notice that I now have 60 pages because it's a different format of the same book. So I could print page to grab the page number or I could do the full chapter. We get our page number here. That's, um, apart from that, that's the really the only difference is the, um, there's no page numbers in an EPUB or a page numbers in the PDF, but if you need them, the permalink or the save or chapter export will get those for you. There is also a search within. Same for both. I like the terms. It tells me the relevancy where it's been found and also the chapters where that term has been found as well. So I can quick find what I'm looking for. There is so and my notes. Um, you will have to have a folder to use this option. Um, so this is like a bookmark. And I can get that. Um, this just stores it in my folder in the section. My annotation or my bookmark details and viewing context will take me back into that book. So I do have a folder. I could save my ebooks um, into my folder and access them later when I sign into my folder. And those notes or annotations as well. So the main page here, you have your carousels. So these will just go through the most recently acquired ebooks in your collection. And one here just goes through the featured ebooks in each of these BISAC categories. So I wanted to look at the management. I can click on it directly from there. It takes me into the detailed record, so I'm not going to the online reader. And here I've got all those options to use the tools here. Also down the bottom of the detailed record, get my publisher permissions too. The book online, I click on the full text. Almost the end of the session. Um, just one more thing I wanted to cover. I need to just uh, come into this one for a sec. because it's got restricted copy and paste. <laughs> I wanted to show you another little tool that you can use um, if you are doing some research. No. I have copy and paste the book though. Too many that I'm allowed to do that with. Okay, unlimited copy and paste. All right, so if I go into the, the PDF, if I just load the book up online, I'm just gonna word while I'm doing that. Within, if I was in the book and I was just reading along in the book, I can copy some of the text. So my publisher permissions say I can. I can copy and can paste paragraph into a Word document and it automatically puts in the notation format for me. This is something that you can... Um, with the books are uh, doing some research. Thanks for to the end of the ebook component of the session. Slides out to you along with the um, the recording as well. So just get a bit of info here uh, about using the ebooks. Another thing that you can also do is use the personal user authentication. So if you do happen to set up a folder, you can actually come into search.ebscohost.com and you sign in using your folder or your Google 
sign in um, and for 90 days you can use that offline so outside of, of the library once the 90 days is over you need to come back into the library log back your folder through EBSCO and then you'll have another 90 days if you do happen to download the EBSCO mobile app um, it's you have this your folder set up so that you can think everything through that way as well to the end of the session was there any questions Okay. Very quiet, so I will thank you all for um, your time today and I'll just go to the last slide and as I mentioned I will send these slides out to you along with the re recording. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Can we email you if we have a further question later? Sure, that's not a problem. All right, thanks so much. Have a great day. And I'm here. Thank you. you.